Hello everyone and welcome back to my rank code let's play. The last time we sneaked into the Ethereum Academy, unlocked uh, Yuma's woman Sona <laughs> and uh, watched the stage play and uh, yeah, a murder happened. So um, that's neat. I want to investigate obviously to see what happened. Who All right. is the culprit? Investigation. I'm not sure if it will help, but can I tell you what I saw? Do it. Yes, please. During the performance, I was doing odd jobs in the wings. Mm-hmm. Aside from the theater club members, there wasn't anyone wandering about like an outsider. I mean, other than when Desuhiko jumped in right at the beginning of the play. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Right, that happened. Well, that's part of the investigation, right? You can't see everyone from the stage after all. Isn't that why he went up there? So he could memorize all the faces that were there? No. That oh, was not. Right. That was not his intention. I think he just wanted attention. But setting that aside, since she didn't see any outsiders, the only persons of interest are those within the theater club. I'll keep that in mind while taking a look around. I've done a few investigations already. I should be able to handle this now. Yeah, confidence, let's yeah, go. you were hopelessly reliant on yours truly until now. I see it's not your brain making the decisions anymore. Mean. <laughs> no need to be mean about it. The eyes are wide open from agony. The body is completely motionless. I can immediately tell she's dead. Though she displayed many expressions while acting, her face is frozen in death in the end. This isn't an act. She was struck by an abrupt and unscripted death. Um, was it poison? That's most likely the case. There are no external injuries, and given the circumstances, she must have ingested poison. This will be tough to solve if that's the case. I know nothing about poison. Detective who doesn't know his poisons? Don't tell me you're a poison virgin! Ew, gross! <laughs> well, you perverted little detective. Get on your knees and apologize, and maybe I'll teach you a thing or two. Shinigami really is on a power trip. How about something like, I'm sorry, I should know my place. I can't live without you, Shinigami! If she was murdered with poison while on stage, the poison must have been prepared somewhere else. I need to look for that while checking out anywhere else that seems suspicious. Hey, don't ignore me, you jerk! <laughs> Karen's corpse. Oh, Cotton's corpse. <laughs> okay. Yep. Also, I just fo realized Fogor profiles. Oh. A picture though. I don't know. Did, did he actually use his ability on Yuma? Or did he just. I mean, as far as I can tell, Yuma still has the same voice, right? So did he just put him in a dress and gave him a wig and called it a day? That's actually funny. Um. Oh. Yashika. She looks so plain. Like, she's totally the killer, right? Just because she. Oh man. Uh, March 18th, okay. She likes teddy bears, dislikes syringes, that Ethereum Academy student, talent sewing. Member of the theater club at the Ethereum Academy, a beauty whose maturity makes it difficult to think of her as a high school student. She's popular in the theater club and is on par with Barona and Karen in terms of acting ability. Mild mannered and quiet, she values the team more than the individual. I don't know. I think in the last episode I said that honestly all of these suspects don't really seem like it except for her maybe but that's still like I don't know a lot of baseless assumptions um number 12 she likes being in the spotlight does like storms the academy student talent dieting wow 
member of the theatre club at the Theatre Academy. She has long, beautiful hair and the elegant aura typical of a lady. She's enth enthusiastic about acting, pros possessing a stoic philosophy about it. However, because of that, she tends to be uncooperative and rarely interacts with the other students. After performing a scene where her character drank poison, she vomited blood and died. Yeah, G good job on the acting part. Aruna. She's also <laughs> taller than me. Everyone's taller than me. Uh, likes trendy makeup. Sympath just like sympathy. Total makeup, I guess. A member of the theater club at Ethere Academy. She puts on the flashiest and trendiest makeup, which further accents her aggressive personality. Although she intimidates everyone around her, she has no desire to overshadow anyone. She genuinely enjoys acting and being on stage, innately capable of playing any role. Kurane. Ah. Uh, I'm a sick. She likes romance novels, dislikes electronic gadgets, talent memorizing the script. I mean, <laughs> shouldn't every actor like memorize the script? A member of the theater club at Ethere Academy. She doesn't talk much and prefers to spend time alone. Because it's difficult for her to express her emotions, no one really knows what she's thinking. But her acting skills place her among the best in the club. <laughs> I don't know, reading this is like... She really do feel like... Just like me, for real. Because I was kind of the same in high school. Like, I, I don't know if that's like... Surprising or not. I, I, I don't think it is. But I was kind of the, well, not the loner type, but more the introverted type. And I feel like people didn't really know what I was thinking either. Like, I probably made that kind of impression of people. At least that's what I feel like. I don't know. Anyone who knows me from high school can either confirm or deny, but I don't think any one of these guys are gonna watch this video, so there's that. But I feel like I came across that way, but like, fun fact, like, Phoenix Ashworth, fun fact, I actually also joined, well, not the theater club, it was technically, um, like in high school, when you choose your class, it was technically, like, a real class. I did, but I only did that for one semester, so like, only half a year, but I was pretty good at it, or like, <laughs> the thing is, I, I always looked very unassuming, but when I actually started, like, the acting bit, Everyone was quite impressed, which I was pr pretty proud of. But yeah, I, I don't know. That's, maybe that's just because I relate to her very personally, but I don't really want her to be the killer. Also because I don't like it when the quiet type is secretly the killer, because like, quite, sometimes people just want to be alone. They don't want to murder everyone. I, don't know, I feel like I'm a, I'm a bit biased towards her. Maybe, maybe I'm gonna regret that as soon as we talk to her and it turns out she's, I don't know, weird or mean or whatever. And then I'm gonna be like, wow, great, I relate to a mean person. But, but you know how it is. Like, from the descriptions we got of her, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that, that's my two cents on it. It's a corpse, these. Let's just investigate the table and move on. Got the glass. There are two glasses on the table. The props used for the duel of poisons cups. I think this glass was supposed to be stored upside down on a shelf in the back. Cotton was the victim, but she's also the one who set it on the table. Maybe poison was already applied to the glass beforehand. Hey, do you know who prepared these glasses? Oh, it's the girls on prop duty. The freshmen are handling them this time. Mm-hmm. Do you know where this glass was before it was placed on stage? Props are kept in the theater club storage. This glass should have been in there too. The theater club storage? In that case, any club member would have access. Um... Was real poison applied to the glass? I just thought it could be possible. But there's the risk of being caught by applying the poison after it was moved to the set. If poison was applied, it would have been before being brought to the set. But on days like this, when there's an open rehearsal, props are brought out of storage right after school. The glass should have stayed on that shelf the whole time. After school... 
Which means it'd be even harder to apply poison before then. Yes. At the very least, the props in the set were fully prepared at least one hour before the performance. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Wine glasses. What I don't get... So... Like, thinking about the motive here, right? Since... Obviously, whoever poisoned the glass, or... Or actually put poison in here, maybe that was the case. Although I don't think actually anything came out of that, right? But like, if someone actually poisoned the glasses, right? Uh, one of the glasses. They knew the performance, right? So they knew that the glasses would be switched around. So they couldn't target like like a specific person because then like they couldn't tell who would be ending up drinking from which glass since they're gonna be switched around. So unless it was actually um, what was her name, Waruna, which I don't think since actually both of them switched the glasses around. And I think Karen actually switched the glasses after Varuna, if I remember correctly. I took a little bit of a break <laughs> from the last episode, so I don't remember 100%, but I think that was the case. So even she couldn't have like been able to tell that uh, who was going to get which glass. What I don't get is why didn't... Like, why don't poison both glasses? Like, if you don't care who dies, why wouldn't you kill both? That's why I'm a little bit confused since I think yeah both of them drank at the same time right so why not poison both <laughs> that's what I'm asking what was the motive this here is supposed to have poison in it according to the script but it's empty now it's dry and shows no signs of ever being wet to be sure the poison in this file wasn't real and it was just another prop right Absolutely. It was always empty. The contents spill easily because of the loose lid, so we don't even keep colored water in it. Cotton just pretended to pour poison from the vial into the glass on stage. Then it's hard to imagine there being any poison inside it. Yeah. Empty from the beginning. The bottle. There's a wine bottle on the table. Karin poured the liquid from this bottle and started to suffer after drinking it. Then that means there's a chance the poison was mixed into this bottle. This isn't wine in here, right? Of course not. It's just grape juice. I poured out the bottle and replaced what was inside. Huh? You, Kurumi? After class, I was asked to help out before I went to get you. I'm still a theater club member after all. Were both the wine and grape juice sealed before you swapped them out? Yes. I received the unopened wine bottle from a club member. I uncorked the bottle and poured the wine down the sink. It's a waste, but we can't drink it anyway. After that, I went to the cafeteria and bought a can of grape juice. Of course, this was also unopened. I poured the juice into the bottle, then put the cork back. I passed the bottle to a club member, and my job was done. That bottle was then placed with the glasses on the shelf before the performance. I see. With so many people around, poison couldn't be added to the bottle after it was placed on stage. If poison was mixed in, it'd be before it was brought on stage. Wine bottle. <clears throat> also... The problem again of only one of them dying and not both of them. Because you'd think if both of them drink the poisoned uh, wine or grape juice, I guess, then both of them would die, but only one of them died. Ooh, look at me going backstage. Do, do, do. Misplaced script? Yeah. There's a script on the floor. That's a script of the play. Someone must have dropped it in all the chaos. The script describes the Duel of Poisoned Cup scene. The character Natasha, played by Cotton, is supposed to take the wine and glasses from the shelf. After that, the glasses are shuffled on stage. According to the script... 
Anatoly Shovel's glasses. Note, make sure the audience cannot see the glasses. Anatoly finished. Natasha, it is my turn then. Natasha also shuffles in a similar way. I am ready. Ana Anatoly and Natasha stand on opposite sides of the table facing one another. After that, Cotton takes the first glass and they both drink at the same time. Unfortunately, Cotton's glass turned out to actually be poisoned. Kurumi, I was wondering about this script. It says, make sure the audience cannot see the glasses. Why is that? It's to make the result feel unpredictable to the audience. If the glasses are visible, no matter how fast they are shuffled, the audience can see which one has the poison. The script doesn't say anything about how many times to shuffle the glasses, or which one will have the poison in it. Exactly. There's no poison to begin with, so it doesn't matter which one's picked. You just pick any glass and act out your death after drinking. In the script, Auden was to die. But... I didn't think she'd actually die. I see. Since the instructions aren't precise, both actresses don't know the results from shuffling either. Yeah. The shuffling of the glasses. That's exactly my point, and why I don't think Baruna is the culprit. Or if she is, she kind of has to be like some kind of weird mastermind. But then again, like I said, she can't really predict how Karen is gonna, uh, yeah, Karen's gonna sw uh, switch around the glasses. So even if she, like, even if she shuffles around the glasses and knows in which one the poison is, like, let's say she's. Sh knows the poisons in the left glass, she shoves them around and they're still on the left glass. She can't know if that's still the case, if um, Karen is gonna shuffle them afterwards. So either she really banged on her luck, uh, or didn't care if she died, or there was a probability that, that she died, or I don't know. Like th That's why that seems very unlikely to me. Not only is Aiko gone, but now Cotton, too. Could this also be a fight for the lead role? But why? If so, those most suspicious are Cotton's rivals. Yoshiko, Waruna, and Kurame. Is the culprit one of those three? I don't know, man. I need to find out if there was anything suspicious about them during the performance. Kurumi was in the wings the whole time, so perhaps she knows something about the others. So yeah, like I said, most suspicious. I mean, I guess. I mean, my, I, mean, I guess Kurane is so suspicious. Like Yoshiko and Kurane are like on my sus list. She like just from the way she would have applied the had to apply the poison. Uh, I don't think it was her. And um, I mean, she's the one who died. <laughs> Before the performance, did you notice anything off about Cotton? Well, I think she was more on edge than usual. She yelled at underclassmen who were late in preparing for the show. She also paced around restlessly. That's not just today. She's been that way since Echo's death. Hmm. Maybe the whole battle for the lead role had stressed her out. But since she was murdered after Echo, she should be considered another victim, right? she knew someone was out to get her, then it's not strange for her to be mentally unstable. Indeed. Karen's manner. Yeah, let's go to all of them. Before the incident occurred, do you know where Yoshiko was and what she was doing? I didn't see Yoshiko in the wings. She may have been watching from the audience. Oh, right. Speaking of which, during the performance, I noticed Yoshiko walking down the aisle. I thought she was coming back from the restroom, but I didn't see her take her seat. What if she wasn't part of the audience? Hmm. Where could she have been? Yoshiko's actions. That is why she's like the most sus at the moment. 
Kurumi, did you notice anything suspicious about Warana while you were watching from the wings? Hmm. As far as I can tell, Warana was just her usual self. She was listening to music right up to the start of the play. I think that's how she concentrates. Did she go near the glasses or bottle before the performance? I wasn't watching her the entire time, but if she did go near the set, I think I would have noticed. Hmm, I see. Warana was the closest to the victim. That's ample opportunity to commit the crime. But still, how did she add the poison? It couldn't have been during the performance, right? Wait, now that I think about it... He was about it, to say, didn't she reach for the right other glass? the lights went dark in that one scene, she went near the shelf to pick up a plate. Her back was toward the audience, so I couldn't see her hands. But she only had two or three seconds max. Could she have poured hidden poison in the glass in that time? Did she have any other opportunities after? Okay, not... The next time she touched the yeah. glasses was during the shuffling scene. But it was Cotton who moved the glasses and bottle. She also prepared the poison vial. Plus, after shuffling, Cotton was the one who chose the first glass. Given the situation, it'd be difficult for Warana to poison Cotton specifically. Yeah. Warana's actions. Exactly what I was saying, Yuma. Good, we're on the same track. What about Kurine? Did she seem strange before the incident occurred? I haven't seen Kurane. She was working up above the whole time. Above? Oh, she was managing the lights then. There's a catwalk above to adjust the lights, and that's where Kurane was supposed to be. So I didn't see her in the wings. There's another girl handling the lights, so it would be helpful to speak to her. Kurane's actions. The ones fighting for the lead role are Yoshiko, Waruna, and Kurane. None of them seem particularly suspicious so far. Yeah. Hey, how long are you gonna keep this up? I'm so over playing 20 questions with this ugly chick. That reminds me. The lights went dark during the performance, right? The entire hall was blacked out. True. Wouldn't it be possible for someone to sneak up on stage and place the poison then? I hadn't thought of that, but I don't think it's possible. Why not? The blackout lasted for only five seconds. We measure it each time to ensure there are no mistakes. So someone would have to move through the dark, get on stage, apply the poison, and get away, all in five seconds. Hmm. That sounds impossible to me. If they were in a hurry, their footsteps would have been heard by everyone too. From the audience, it may be impossible, but what about from the wings? No, there were multiple club members, including me, in the wings at all times. While the lights are out, we are always on standby to support the actors. If someone went on stage, the other members and I would have noticed. I guess it's not possible then. <laughs> Even an amateur has more logic than you. I guess you're useless without a certain someone. Man, poor Yuma. Stage blackout. Okay. Let's see if there was anything else backstage. I kind of just ran through it. She mentioned that the catwalk for adjusting the lights is up above. Are those the stairs to reach them? Would you like to go check up there? Yeah, I would. Spotlights for the stage are set over there. It's a lot narrower than I thought. It's pretty high up. Yeah. It'd be hard on anyone with the fear of heights. Me, for example. So you can move the lights as needed for the play. I mean, I guess... <laughs> you could've dropped the poison from up here. But then you would be really, like... Then you would have, like... I don't know, what do you call, like, pr really precise aim, like... 
hitting the glass from up here I don't know maybe that's like the most possible possibility so far but it seems still very unlikely but yeah maybe Kuroni is actually sus oh no the table is directly below which means you can't see the glasses getting shuffled from the audience seats but they could have been visible from up here I could find out for sure if I could talk to someone that was up here Catwalk. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe that's all the investigating I can do. May maybe oh god. That was that was a slight shitty no jump scare. Way. Anything else? Any optional dialogue? Oh. Hmm. Damn. Places among the gentry, so these don't suit my palate. <laughs> they do be eating good though. Like backstage. I mean, this backstage area is like huge. On this side. I don't know, man. I mean, I guess. <sighs> yeah. I mean, our backstage area, like in our high school, that was not nearly as huge, and we did not have a catwalk to go up there either. Like this is um this is just way more fancy, but I guess the school is more fancy in general. So uh yeah. Okay, I can't go up here. I was about to say is that a Shinigami figure, but that's just a light. <laughs> okay, I think we can move on then. Finished. Well, I think I've checked all that I can for now. I have a good idea of how things work around here. So far, I think Yashiko and Kurane are the most sus. Kurane a little bit more. But I think we still have to talk to both of them. Like, to, like, confirm what they did or where they were during the performance and stuff. It seems certain Cotton died from drinking poison. But I couldn't find any clues that point to how it was done. Oh, stuck already, Mr. Pervert Detective? If you need my adorable angel's whisper to help, maybe you should get on your knees and beg. What angel? You're a death god. <laughs> Have you <sighs> seen her wings? We shouldn't even pay attention to her. But she's right. I'm stuck. What should I do? Talk to the club members. Yuma, if you're done with the crime scene investigation, are you conducting the questioning next? Yeah. Questioning? Aren't you going to talk to Yoshiko, Maruna, Kurane, and the others? Oh. Oh, right. Let's go and talk to them. <laughs> She's such a loudmouth. <laughs> but how do we talk to them? I doubt they'll be too willing to share anything with me. I joined the club only recently, so they don't trust me. And you're a complete outsider, Yuma. Even though you're disguised as a cute girl right now. That's it! A disguise! Maybe this could work if we use Desuhiko's disguise. He could disguise as any of the girls and start questioning them. Uh, oh, oh. Robert, she's not gonna recognize you. You're in go girl mode. I am the Amaterasu Peacekeeper's Vice Director. The trusted right hand, showered with love by Director Yomi himself. Good for you. Martina Electra. Uh, uh, <gasps> Goodness me. You've surely done something reckless this time around. No, she didn't looks, recognize me. Looks like she found out you snuck into a girls' school. I think this deserves the death penalty, don't you? Um, there's a reason why I'm dressed this way. What are you doing? Hurry up and make the arrest. Oh, wait, I can explain! Huh? What? You have no right to remain silent. You have no right to talk to a lawyer, either. 
You only possess two rights. Confess the truth, and beg Amaterasu Corporation for mercy. Take her away. Hey! What's going on? Um, please, wait! Are you sure you want to try and stop Amaterasu Peacekeeper Vice Director Martina? Yeah, tell me, why are you taking Kurumi? To arrest her, naturally, on the suspicion of murdering Karen. Huh? What? Why would I do that? We have reached this conclusion following an interrogation of a person of interest. According to them, you were responsible for handling the contents of the wine bottle prior to the start of play. It's clear you took the opportunity to pour poison inside it. It was only grape juice! I didn't add any poison! Besides, where would she even get poison from? Ms. Martina, this was discovered in the chemistry lab. <laughs> oh, it appears my deduction was correct. The poison was right under our noses. Why is it so much... Hmm. so much poison? It seems to have been a particularly potent one. Why do the students access the to that? The label warns that even a small amount ingested can result in death. You're not reading the label. The, the label's on the other side. And some of the liquid is missing. There's no mistake. You secretly stole this from the chemistry lab and used it for murder, didn't you? That bottle is way too big to be stolen without anyone noticing. What a worthless comment. One could simply unseal it in the chemistry lab and put the substance in a smaller container to take wherever desired. Which could then be directly poured into the wine bottle. <gasps> if you're gonna pick a fight, you better have sound logic backing you up. This is the last time I'll do this for you. Hmm. There's a warning on the bottle. This chemical will react to oxygen in open air, rendering it harmless 30 minutes after the bottle is unsealed. Huh? After 30 minutes, it becomes harmless? If you think that's important, go for broke and try pointing it out. Do it. Uh-oh. Well, I mean, I guess we're gonna do that. Um, I'm curious about what's written on the bottle's warning label. Warning label? This chemical will react to oxygen in open air, rendering it harmless 30 minutes after the bottle is unsealed. It has been 30 minutes since the murder occurred. If this chemical was unsealed at the time of the crime, it will have already lost its potency. Let us check. Uh. Nothing. It seems likely that this poison was used as the murder weapon. A poison properties. Which means the crime was possible only for someone at the school with access to the chemistry lab. However, this fact does not contradict her being the killer. Wait, no! I am well aware that many of Etheria Academy's students are children of those affiliated with Amaterasu Corporation. Okay, this doesn't... This doesn't line up time-wise because... If she poisoned the bottle before the performance... And the performance... I remember this. The, the scene with the poison drinking happened 40, 45 minutes in. So if she poisoned the bottle before the stage... That means it would have been harmless the moment they drank from it because 30 minutes passed. So you are wrong, lady. However, that cannot be used as an excuse to bend the truth. Criminals must be punished as criminals. <laughs> For that is justice. Now be gone. Any additional interference and you'll be arrested as well. Take her away. And dispose of the corpse on stage before it rots. Man, I really want to ace attorney this. Be like, no, objection. This wouldn't have worked. 
Man. Corpses spoil so quickly due to the rain and humidity in this town. Bro, we inside. Why? There must be a mistake. It wasn't me. That's right. She's not the killer. Please, listen to me. I warned you not to interfere any further. She swapped out the contents of the bottle before the play began. And the incident occurred more than 30 minutes into the play. Yeah. If the chemical use in the crime becomes harmless after 30 minutes, then it's impossible for her to be the culprit. I see. How logical and beautiful. There is beauty in being logical with all things, much like the golden ratio. Like gazing upon a flawless art piece, and the more delicate it appears, the more excited I become envisioning the moment I pulverize it! You good? Huh? Logic is meaningless in the face of ultimate power! It is nothing but a glass ornament beneath an iron hammer! Okay. Uh, no! I, I'm so excited! Could you take that somewhere else? What's with her? Yeah, that's a good question. I guess all the Peacekeeper higher-ups are perverts without exception. Indeed. Now, my soft and fragile-looking student, your play-acting as a detective is over. Play-acting? If you intend to continue interfering with our justice, then you will be pulverized. Help me, Yuma! I like how she didn't have an actual mm -hmm. response. Yuma? I've heard that name somewhere. Uh-oh. No, That's bad. Never mind. I don't know a little girl like you. <laughs> Play acting as a detective. Oh man. She's right. What am I doing? You're doing good, sweetie. I've mistaken detectives for superheroes. Don't worry, you're doing fine. Justice is a matter of opinion. With enough conviction, anything can be considered justice. It's only an assumption. Completely worthless and completely powerless. Hey, I told you all students must wait on the lower level. Stop wandering around and go join the others. <sighs> Kurumi was taken away. What should I do? Do I just walk away as if nothing happened? No, I can't do that. Kurumi believed in me. She said that detectives are heroes. I'm no hero, but I'm the only one who can save her right now. I have to do something. Yeah. <laughs> the truth is still hidden. To discover the truth behind this case, and to find out who the real killer is. I need Desuhiko's help. I need his disguise ability to get information from the club members. Wouldn't it be awkward if we, if we like, talk to the teacher right now and then it turns out it was not Desuhiko, but actually the teacher? For now... Let's not go to the... Okay. Fine. Anyone else I can talk to? Hmm. Please wait. We've been directed to keep the students here until further notice. If you want around, you look suspicious, so it's best to wait patiently and quietly. I see. I guess they're offering to peacekeepers too. I mean, I guess some of them are just doing their job. Hey. Hey, what are you milling around here for? Get back on the ground. If you don't get down there, I'll take your mess off. These are damn kids. He is not one of them. I think Barona's a bit suspicious. She has what it takes to kill someone. It has to be her. You know. Does she have something against Barona? Yeah, I don't know. I think we established quite well while why it wouldn't be Barona unless she didn't care if she potentially died herself. Yeah. There are lots of notices about concerts and recitals. Several of them are related to theatrical performances. Well. It is the theater hall, so there's obviously gonna be a bunch of play-related stuff. Hello, Todd. 
Okay. By the way, oh, I was about to say update in the uh in the profiles, but I guess not. I'm at forty minutes, but well, too late. Oh, <laughs> you're that cutie who was with Kurumi. I <laughs> I didn't mean to actually run into the cutscene, but um. Now that we're here, we're going through it. What are you doing here? If you don't go underground, they'll be mad at you. It, yeah. I was called for questioning, but now I'm heading back. Let's go together. Oh, it's fine. I'll be right there, so go on ahead without me. You sure? Well, I was curious. Are all the other theater club members also underground? Like Yoshiko, Warona, and Kurone too? Yeah, that's right. Yoshiko is feeling pretty shocked right now. She's in the rest area because she wants to be alone. Warona is with her usual friend group in the makeup room. As for Kurone, maybe she's in the staff room with the other club members. Ah, oh, got it. Thanks. I'll be going now. Hey, bye. Um, teacher? I'm sorry, my student is distressed, so please excuse us for a moment. You okay, Yuma? I'm fine, but Kurumi got caught by the peacekeepers. Are you serious? What are you gonna do? Desuhiko, can you lend me a hand investigating this case? Tell me you want to keep investigating behind the peacekeepers' backs. Yeah? I know it's reckless. The chief even told me not to, but this is something I have to do. You gotta save the woman you love, right? I totally get it. No, it's not like I love... My man, usually I'd help you out of sheer respect alone. But those bastards questioned me already, so uh, I can't move from this spot. Damn. Couldn't you make up an excuse to leave? Aren't you good at that? Yeah, I probably could, but I couldn't stay away for too long. Maybe I could slip out in disguise, but that'd put them on high alert and make the investigation tougher. Then what should I do? There's another solution. I'll disguise you. So you can keep on investigating. You want me to keep investigating in disguise? Yeah, I'll give you a voice changer too. I'll leave this to you. But if this goes on for much longer, we'll both be in trouble. My disguises can't last forever. What? Really? It puts a huge strain on my body. I'm already starting to feel dizzy. Are, are you okay? Not really. But I gotta do this. It's all to save the love of your life. I mean, this saying I love her is a bit extreme, but... Besides, I'm a master detective of the WDO. I've seen plenty of dangerous situations. So, who do you want to disguise as? Tell me. Hmm. I mean, God damn it. I mean, they're all rivals, right? I mean, Yoshiko is like by herself, right? So it wouldn't really. Like, people wouldn't really notice if she vanished or if she. Like, if there were suddenly two around, right? Barona's probably a bit risky since she's like hanging out with her, her friends. So they would be like, wait, why are they two? Like, if someone, I don't know, just goes to the bathroom or something. I mean, also nobody knows what Kurane is, so I don't know. Let's go with Yoshiko. I want to disguise as Yoshiko. So, you want to be the star candidate of the theater club? She's known for being an honor student, right? So, you know all about her. Why do you think I wanted her on the school? Once I've seen the face, I never forget it. Just leave it to me. Ha! 
Pardon me. She said she's not feeling well. May I accompany her to the restroom? I'm sorry. We'll be back right away. <laughs> Yoshiko's bag. The waist bag used in a theater club belongs to Yoshiko. It's designed by a brand from outside Kanawa that Pucci also adores. Or adored, <laughs> we should say. <laughs> Oof, man. That first chapter is still, uh, still very extreme. All right, that was perfect. I slipped a voice changer under your clothes, so be sure to use it. Oh, also, just a heads up, uh, touching your own boobs won't feel good or anything. Thank you. I'm not gonna touch them! We'll see about that, perverted detective. I mean, if I wanted to touch boobs, Shinigami, I mean, he had quite the opportunity, didn't he? I get both fucking mystery labyrinth. Just saying. I'm heading back now. Get going. Yoshiko is supposedly well respected by everyone. I hope I can extract information from different theater members. But I'd better be careful and avoid the real Yoshiko. <laughs> yeah. I think Yoshiko is in the rest area, and Warna is the makeup room. Kurune should be in the staff room. Investigation. A perverted cross dressing detective appears. Can I. Huh? <laughs> yeah. You're actually planning to go in there? My disappointment in you is beyond the disgust. No. I should probably stay out of the women's rest. I, I just wanted to see if I could. Wait, why doesn't the school have a men's restroom? Like, this is an all girls school. I mean, the teachers don't use the same restrooms as the students, right? So why is there a male restroom? Uh, I'm just gonna use the restroom. No. Dress like that? I know you're a perp, but sheesh. Yeah, there's no way I can go in there like this. <laughs> like, just saying. Why do we need that? Hey, uh, hmm. Please wait, we've been directed to keep the students here until further notice. You wanna run, it looks suspicious, so it's best to when I punch so blah, 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 blah. I guess that's the same dude and I just, oh yeah, it is the same dude actually. The theater hall is currently closed off by Vice Director Martina of the Peacekeepers. All students who are at the scene are to remain in the lower level. You are to stay there as well. But... How do I go... to the other rooms then? We'll go down here? What is it? You need something from me? The peacekeepers just called to me, so cannot wait until later. Hmm. I guess she doesn't have, want to talk. Fair enough. <sighs> How much longer is this going to take? I'm so hungry, I'm about to faint. If I knew this was going to happen, I would have had a meat bun before coming. Oh yeah, meat buns. Um, Yoshiko, you going around keeping everyone's spirits up? That's so like you. Uh, oh, um, uh, no, that's not quite right. You're always so kind. Be careful to not push yourself too hard. I know I haven't, like, talked about this before, but I kind of like how the, like, art stuff of the portraits just changes. Oh. Oh, oh Yoshiko's there. I should probably say where well, I have this disguise on. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, whenever, um, Desuhiko and Yuma are in disguise. Or also, um,. When during the play, they also had like quite a different art style for the portraits. That's actually, actually kind of cool. Oh. I was watching the play just a couple time before the bus arrived. I can't believe I've got caught up in all this. Tough luck, huh? I guess he must be thinking the same thing. Makeup room, okay. Oh. After this, I don't know if I'll be able to go on stage again. I'm so scared. I feel like that's the least of your worries, but okay. You're so oblivious, Master. And a creeper, too. What do you mean? Hey, 
Do you have a moment? I want to talk about what happened. Um, Yoshiko? Hmm? What's wrong? I'm sorry. It's nothing. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. <sighs> she suddenly fell quiet. I guess I shouldn't question her anymore. Sus. She looked like she wanted to say something, but maybe it's something she can't say to Yoshiko. Maybe she'll talk if I'm disguised as someone else. Let's see. I mean, can't really disguise as Kurone since he's right over there. Or, or are you Kurone? No. Yes, no. Hey, it's Yoshiko! What's wrong? Oh, it's nothing. What's going on? Is there something they don't want Yoshiko to hear? Let's see. Yoshiko! Why did you leave me back there? I was so scared. Those peacekeepers kept harassing me. They're the worst. Um, you're... I watched from above the whole time. I saw Cotton die. Oh, I'm going to have nightmares about this. I'm so scared. Can we walk home together today? Please? Hey, if you were watching from above, does that mean you were with Kurone on the lights? I was. Why are you asking me this now? <laughs> then tell me, did Kurone do anything strange during the performance? Did she carry anything suspicious or do anything out of the ordinary? No, she was the same old unfriendly Kurene. She came to the catwalk before the performance and was there the whole time until the incident occurred. If she did anything out of the ordinary, I would have immediately noticed. Lighting requires perfect teamwork. Though to be honest, it feels really suffocating to be around her. Oh, I wish you were on the lights instead, Yoshiko. You got a crush on me? Anyway, why do you ask? Oh, uh, no reason. So, Karine was just her usual self, huh? Yep. I never let you. Lightning Staff Testimony. Yeah! Remember the Duel of Poisoned Cups part? Where they shuffled the cups? Could you see that part from above? Hmm? Yes, of course! Although the audience couldn't, I could see their hands moving from above. As part of the lighting crew, that was my most important scene, so it would have been a problem if I couldn't. Most important? Yoshiko! You complimented me during the meeting about this, remember? It's the scene where we shine the spotlight on the glasses after shuffling. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> that... Uh... How is it supposed to go again? <laughs> oh man. It's the presentation where we use two spotlights. Kurine puts a spotlight on one of the glasses first, then I immediately put another spotlight down. Were you not watching? Uh, I was. I just remembered. You did an excellent job with the lights. Wow! <laughs> you complimented me! I'm so excited. <laughs> I doubt I'll sleep at all tonight. May we finally have that sleepover? There's something I need to do right now. Maybe another time. <laughs> Shuffling the class. I like how Shinigami is jealous. Even though, like, I mean, I guess, yes, the girl is clinging to Yuma, but, like, she is not interested in Yuma, she's interested in Yoshiko. So, there's no need to be jealous, Shinigami, okay? It's fine. Also, yes, uh, collecting evidence to, like, uh, to defend my girl, Kurone. <laughs> it's a club locker. Yoshiko's name tag is on it. I should open it and search inside. 
You're opening a young girl's locker? What you're doing is totally psycho. I'm gathering evidence. It's for the investigation. Give me a break. Yeah, whatever. I hope it doesn't turn into a hobby. The script and makeup items are neatly placed. Also a glass. Huh? There's a glass in the back. It's the same kind that was used for the play. The violence of leaving even destroys the force of will to... This is too low resolution. I'm trying to read this. But I can, I can. I can. What is this doing here? Another glass. Woman's brand. <laughs> what else is there? I like that. Like oh, creativity. There's a photo on the back of the door. It's a two shot photo of Yoshiko and another girl wearing this school's uniform. Is that Aiko or not? Who is she? Two shot photo of Yoshiko. That's about it for the things of note in this locker. Man, I wanted to read the note that was on the inside of the locker, but I guess the current locker, Browner's locker. Okay, so I need to come in here with all disguises anyway, so it's fine. Kurani's locker. I mean. I can't open that unless she moves, so... You managed it well. Huh? What do you mean? You're getting good at playing dumb, too. <laughs> are you practicing for the peacekeepers? You really are the top actress after all. Are you talking about what just happened? You really want to say that so loudly. <laughs> Don't worry. I know how to keep a secret. She seems to believe Yoshiko is the culprit from the way she's talking. Is there something about Yoshiko that makes her think that? Okay. It's a club locker. Kurani's name tag is on it. <laughs> uh, um, that isn't your locker, Yoshiko. Never. Huh? Oh, you're right. What? Did you forget? We talked about this during the last meeting. Using someone else's makeup will lead to fights, so we aren't allowed to open other people's lockers. The situation is bad enough already, so please don't do anything that could start more fights. Oh, right. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So let's see the other room first. And then we gotta switch disguises at some point. <laughs> oh, hi. Can we have some time alone for a bit? Uh oh. She is not happy to see um, me. About what happened? How could you show your face here after murdering Cotton? Huh? You're not supposed to be here. Listen, the peacekeepers are everywhere. So stay away from me, got it? Murderers should just... Wait! Who are you calling a murderer? Enough! I have nothing to say to you! Shut up and get out of here! That was intense. I heard they were on bad terms, but maybe she's more on edge because of what happened? On top of that, Warana thinks Yoshiko is the killer. Maybe there's a reason why she thinks that. Hmm. Maybe that was the worst disguise to choose first, but... I mean, if we're gonna go with all disguises anyway at some point, I guess it doesn't matter. Oh, Yoshiko, Karen was poison, hey. was blah. It's okay, it wasn't your fault. Sad. Sad. So, 
Who's in here? Oh, what should I do? I'm gonna get yelled at. What's wrong? Oh, Yoshiko, I'm so glad you're here. Is there a problem? Yes, well, we're missing a prop glass. Mm-hmm. A glass? You mean for the stage? The, uh, that one in my locker? Yes. You're the one who prepared it for our play today. Oh, um, did I do that? Huh? Did you forget? We originally planned to use wine glasses, but their thin stems break so easily. So last time you bought four others, including the backups. Uh, oh, right. Two backups were on the prop shelf, but there's only one of them now. Oh, where could it have gone? Hmm. Another glass. Updated. Oh, speaking of, I want to ask if you're the one who set the glasses up on the stage. Yes, I was. Did you notice anything strange with the glasses at the time? No, they were spotless. We can't let anything happen to the glasses our actors use. I see. Thanks. One glass is updated. Hmm. Even if I figure anything out, I'm not telling you. I mean, your deductions aren't that great anyway. I'm sorry, Shinigami. But we gotta, we gotta be honest. Um, you were in charge of the costumes. You're acting like this is the first time we've met. <laughs> Awkward. Do you not remember me? Well, people call me the ghost member all the time. Oof. I'm here every day, but no one notices me. Well, at least I'm not as bad as Kurene. But she stands out a lot when she's on stage. Could it be she acts a certain way so she doesn't stand out on purpose? What do you think, Yoshiko? Uh, uh I'm not so sure. <laughs> she's quiet. Maybe she's not on good terms with Yoshiko. Indeed. A gun? <laughs> oh, it's just a water gun. There's a hole on top for adding water. That's the prop we used in our previous performance. You did a wonderful job. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, water gun. That should be enough. Maybe that's all the investigating I can do. Or is this like... <laughs> hmm. So if you put the poison in the water gun, could you then theoretically shoot the poison into the cup, uh, into the glass from the lightning stuff? Hmm. I guess that could have been used. But then again, it's also still lying here, so if it was used, then someone would have brought it back. Hmm. I'm confused. Should I end the investigation? But I need to. I need to switch my disguise. Can I do that before that? Or do I have to mandatorily like end the dis investigation and then restart another one as a new disguise? Because that the theater hall is currently closed off by Vice Director Martina of the Peacekeepers. Okay. All students who are at the scene are to remain in the lower level. Yes, okay. Because that can't be it, right? I really need to go and look, like look around as. I mean, maybe Kurane, but definitely Warona. I don't know, definitely, but like. No, never mind. Definitely Kurane because I need to talk to Waru now. That's that's right. But anyway, we're go not gonna do that this episode because um, this episode is over. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it. So, what are you guys' theories? Um, let me know in the comments. I am curious. 
I don't I don't know. I mean, the thing is now that everyone is randomly accusing Yoshiko makes me think that she's maybe not it. Because that would be too obvious. But I don't want it to be Kurane. <laughs> I literally don't even know her. I'm literally already defending her. I'm, I'm projecting hard. It's it's bad. It's bad. If I don't get this one, it's because like the murder on this one is because I'm projecting too much, but <laughs> I thought you were gonna go in the room. Why else are you even dressed up like that? Bruh. Anyway, I <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!